I rarely see an equity or balance chart like this. At any point during this, the, these sort of first 70% or 70 trades, at any point during this process, did you have any doubts? Did you stress out? Anything like that? Oh. What's up traders? In this video, we are bringing back Emmanuel. We've actually already interviewed him when he passed the evaluation last year and received a 50K funding, but he eventually got disqualified a couple of months later. And we go into more details of what happened, but what he's actually done now, he's got himself two direct funded accounts, 50K each, and has passed both. And now he's one of our portfolio managers managing $200,000. And so in this interview, you're gonna learn exactly how he managed to do it and how exactly is he running his business as a funded trader with multiple prop firms. You're not gonna to wanna to miss this, so watch until the end because this interview is packed full of wisdom, full of tips, full of advice and tactics for you to be able to find success just like Emmanuel has. So make sure that you're smashing that like button, hit that bell notification, so you're not going to want to miss any future interviews and of course subscribe to this channel right let's get started emmanuel welcome back it's been a whole year since your previous interview so how you been yeah hi rodrigo i'm good i'm good uh time flies it's been a year as you said um but things are all good here um how you been yeah i've been very well in the first interview, you've met my cousin Diego. For those watching, if you want to watch that first interview, the link will be in the description somewhere. But yeah, everything's good. Cool. We've been well. We've uh, we've been looking uh, tr ourselves. We've been trading, looking after the bank level traders. We been all you know. We work together every single day, scalping, day trading the markets. So yeah, good, good, busy essentially. But how about yourself? Because uh, you got, you were interviewed initially last year because you passed one of the evaluations. Yeah. what happened next from that point um so to, to be transparent so yeah you're correct so about a year ago i passed the evaluation 50k evaluation mm -hmm. um and i started trading and about a month or two after i actually lost that account due to personal things that was like a bit of over trading a bit of forcing trade so i took um, a couple months after that to really tighten up my strategy my processes and yeah i came back did two two challenges well not two challenges i jumped straight on the direct funding and yeah here we are past both of them and yeah yeah that is very impressive not only did you come back from disqualification but you came back with so much confidence in yourself that you didn't just buy one you bought two direct funding accounts and that's these correct. were what were they these were 250k accounts right that's correct yeah yeah. Right. I think it's just under five grand or something like that. Yeah, yeah, it's not, it's, it's not cheap, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, right. uh, but essentially, with the direct funding, you essentially skip the evaluation and you go straight to a fully funded account. So you don't need to necessarily worry about the relative drawdown for one. And once you hit 10%, we double the account. So you've done that now. Uh, yeah. So how much are you actually currently managing with CTI? Uh, 200 grand. Amazing. And are you, is this the only prop firm that you're with or are you with other prop firms? Uh, no, so I'm actually with other prop firms because, uh, so trading is now my full-time income, um, has yeah. been for the last two years. So I manage capital across various uh, prop firms and yeah. Uh, I profit on them, I get paid out, and but I kind of run a business um, and using funded, funded yeah. accounts. Press it. Well, yeah, well, at, that, at this level, you have to treat it like a business. And yeah. I find that traders who do this, who have this type of mindset and actually have the processes, they actually continue to succeed. But they're very few and far between. I'm talking less than 1% of traders are able to, to do this consistently, but you've been doing it for two years. And you know, there are setbacks. You experienced that around 12 months ago, but you know, you've managed to learn from those experiences. So what would you say? Cause you've obviously last year, you, you experienced a little setback. What exactly did you tweak in order to then 
have the confidence to go and purchase um, a few direct funded accounts with us? Yeah, no, that's a good question. Um, so the first thing I did was was really take a, uh, a step back and evaluate what went wrong. So I think it's very, very important for traders to analyze their past trades or analyze their failed accounts or whatever happened that went wrong and back test and really look at, okay, this trade what was the outcome, this trade what was the outcome, what did I do here, what was the outcome. So I spent about two weeks going over the account that I lost previously and yeah. going over the trades I made and why I made them. And I found that a lot of them, about 60% of the trades was forcing trades. So I have obviously like every trader, I have a strict uh, criteria and I've got a system and processes. And I was realizing that I wasn't letting all of my processes be hit before forcing the trades. Right. And then what I realized was if I just, if if I stuck to just the trades that actually hit every single try criteria, I'll be way more successful. Yes. Literally by just doing that. And so that's what happened. And then when I, so I came off of the back of that back testing and then I spent another month or two trying in this new, not it's not new strategy, but new processes. Yeah. Um, and then after two months, I saw the, the difference completely of the results when I just stick to all of my processes very strictly without no deviations or no excuses of trying to force trades. Um, and then, yeah, after that, I knew, okay, cool, I've got it. And then that gave me the confidence to obviously purchase two direct funding accounts and ultimately go on to fast both of them. So. Wow, amazing. Hats off to you, Emmanuel, because <laughs> what, what you... It doesn't sound like you changed the system. It sounds like you just had a, a switch in your mindset. You you went from being deviating every now and again to just being very strict. Very if the criteria is not there, there's no trade. If the criteria is there, there is a trade and you execute. But that discipline, it doesn't come by accident. So how did you develop this discipline? Would you say... Was it because you you know it's enough is enough you've you've learned your lessons or like what 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 how do you maintain as well this discipline? Yeah, no, it's a good question. I think it's a mixture of what you just said. Um, one, I've been trading for almost a decade now, so um, I look obviously I am young actually, um, but I, I started trading very very early. So one, it's a mixture of like you said, I had enough because I feel like when you go when you feel your potential, but you're not actually it's not out on paper you, you can get frustrated mm -hmm. and i knew and i know that i'm a good trader i know i can trade so i feel it was like you said a mixture of frustration that how many times are you going to keep going through these setbacks until you learn your lesson and yeah. the second just being experienced i feel like experience as well of being disciplined like i said i'm human just like everyone else so i've been through it and i feel like yeah. the discipline just got strengthened over time yeah um, so honestly, I think a combination of the two um, to get to where I am now. Yeah, yeah amazing. Because the thing is, this this is that you went, you experienced that transition that many traders are unable to go through that transition, right? And when you think about it, it's literally like, it's just a switch, isn't it? It yeah. gets to the point where enough is enough and you, you literally just start following the rules. Now that you experience that struggle, you overcome what you were doing wrong. You overcome those mistakes where you were entering trades that weren't valid. They wasn't ticking all the criteria to now you are being a lot more consistent. What would you say currently is the way that you are, how are you managing your, your, your funding as a business? How are you doing that currently? How would you sort of explain the process on a, let's say, you know, what would your sort of typical week look like? Okay. So um, just a quick caveat, I'm a swing trader, so I don't need to be at the screens during the day, every day kind of things. So I think that makes it easier. It suits my style personally. Yeah. So I only look at the charts on average per day, max an hour a day, if that sometimes 30, 45 minutes. And so what that looks like is in the morning on the UK open, 7, 8 a.m., I look for setups. If it's, again, I've got very strict criteria now, so... If it's not there, I carry on with my day. I do other things in my day as well. So I've got e-commerce business. I travel quite a lot. So my days are generally packed. I go to the gym once in a while. So 
I'll I'll get up at US Open. I mean, not US, UK Open in the morning. Yeah. Spend about twenty minutes if my setups are not there. Move on to the rest of my day and the kind of things I've got planned for the day, and then I do another one in the evening. So just uh, midway through the US session, so around five six p.m. Look for any setups. If it's not there, then that's it, literally, and then carry on the next day. It sounds very simplistic, but um, I've had to go through a lot of, you know, drawdowns and setbacks to, to get. Sometimes simple is the best way. It, it sounds it sounds counterintuitive, but the more simple it is, the better the results are that I've found and the better the system is to follow. I, I, I think I've gone through the stages of trying to overcomplicate trading and yeah. trying to do the most with trading, trying to have beyond the screens 24 seven, trying to place a hundred indicators, all that stuff. I'm just really, really simple now, the way I trade yeah. and it produces the results at the end of the day. So that's all I care about. So Yeah, yeah. Well, it seems that you've embraced the philosophy of less is more. That's, you know, this, this, that's, this, is, this is a key and although trading is complex it gets to the point where you have to find a process that you yourself see as it's simple now if you obviously show your strategy to somebody else and then your process and how you execute is actually quite complex but right now it feels quite simple but you've obviously dialed back you, you've refined your your process uh, in a way that it suits not only your personality, but the lifestyle. So you say that you you run another business and you do a bit of traveling. How does this impact your trading? Um, I think it's had a positive effect on my trading because it gives me something else to do. And mm -hmm. I'm less prone to over trading or over complicating my strategy. I think a yeah. thing that I, I kind of struggled with in the past, which I've kind of overcome now, was over trading in the sense where and everyone's been there where you, you're on the charts, not, you don't see anything clear as day that follows your set processes or principles, but because you're here now and you're, you're twiddling your thumbs, you just, you'll, you'll find something, you know, you'll just find something to look at, find something to trick your mind into saying, okay, this is a good trade, even though it's not. And mainly that's, that's derived out of just boredom and overcomplicated. Mm. So I think that happened a lot in the past. So I think yeah. with having other businesses, like I said, I run an e-commerce business and travel, it just distracts me. It, it gives me something to do during my day. So I'm not just at my screen and again, trying to force something. So it's been a definitely, definitely a, a, a big a, additional benefit to my trading um, edge anyway, my trading processes. So yeah. Amazing. Amazing. So what I find personally and working with clients is that when you have another business or perhaps maybe a job, family commitments, it's quite difficult to switch off from the market because you, for example, to run a business, especially e-commerce business, you, you need to have a particular entrepreneurial mindset. Whereas an entrepreneurial mindset in trading may not be productive, may not be efficient because with entrepreneurship, it's like it's all about the grind, it's all about putting the, the work in and, you know, but with, with trading, it's not about the grind. It's not about how many hours you put in front of the chart. As you've already explained, it's less is more. So how do you switch from one role to another role every day? Oh, that's a good question. Um, it's definitely, it's a good question. And you're definitely correct because it's just the polar opposites. Um, like, as you said, with trading, it's a more kind of less is more approach, but in business you've got to literally put grind into it how do i switch it i mean i don't know i've never had to think about that i think i just got used to it if i'm being totally honest i think um again with trading i think i just got to a point as you rightly said previously where enough is enough this is how trading works and i think i'd re definitely recommend if i may trading in the zone everyone's heard of it well most people if you haven't read that i think when, when i kept experiencing drawdowns and stuff i had to read that book until it got cemented in my head and trading in the zone is the principles of just trading is the statistics game it's it's you know when you really understand what trading is i think it's just cemented to a point where it's very easy for me to just kind of put trading in its own box but then yeah. when i get into the real world and i'm doing my business and stuff i just naturally just 
move towards that side of of life. But I think I think in the in the honest answer to answer your question is just just experience as well. I've been doing this for so long now. I just feel like it's about time. But because if you don't you with life, and I think with life and trading, you're gonna get hit with the same lessons and doing the same problems until you learn the lesson in the problem. Yeah. And I think I've gone through this a million times to understand, okay, this is what I'm going to do with trading. And then business is just completely different and just do what I need to do with that. Um, so. Wow. You know, this this is a clear example of how important it is to never quit because all those setbacks, all that failure, you know, all, the, all that trial and error that over the years, now in the last sort of two years, it's, it's working out. But, you know, you need those watching, you need to ask yourself, do you have eight to 10 years? Are you willing to put eight to 10 years into the business, into yourself, right, and not give up? Or is this a get rich quick type of business for you? Because in reality, it's not, is it? Yeah, <laughs> far from. I think I saw a quote, trading is the hardest way to make easy money. And that's just the truth of it. Like now, it's easy, quote unquote, easy. But the process, the person you have to become, the processes, that's the hardest bit. And I feel like once people get through that, it's the hardest way to make the easiest money in a way. So that's just how it feels now, anyway. So I love that. I love that. So what I want to do is um, share some of your stats. Because uh not sure if you've seen them yet. No, I haven't. First time from you as well. So you started trading um, this particular uh, direct funding account in May, 24th of May. Did you did you purchase both at the same time? I believe so, yeah. Or well, very close in time, but I believe so, oh, yeah. Okay. All right, so we'll just look at, we'll look through one of them. Um. But what, from what I can see here, you know, you have a mixture of wins and losses, but more 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 wins than the, uh, I would say. But there was a period here, for example, where you went through a little bit of um, a bump in the road. You had like, two losses, two wins, three losses. So straight away, I've seen this happen many times. A lot of traders go into tilt, right? They, they start self-sabotaging. So... When you experience these type of, uh, let's say, three losses in a row, what what, what is your process? Um, I just try and remain impartial and just remember that it's the cost to, to, to your business, per se. Again, I, I really look at this as a business, and I feel like when people, when you really understand that trading is a business and it's statistics, um, for me, I've got a certain strike rate with my strategy, so I know, well, correct me if I'm wrong, but I haven't seen it, but no one has a 100% strike rate. Um, if they, again, I may be wrong, someone might be out there, but I'm under the impression no one has a 100% strike rate. So if that's the case, then you, you have to expect you're going to lose because obviously your strike rate is not 100%. Mm-hmm. So when these losses come, it's just part of the statistics, it's part of the game, it's part of the cost to um, my business. Like no business doesn't have cost with it. If I, even in my e-commerce business, I've got cost of goods sold. So yeah. I have to pay a cost to sell some of my services. The same here. When, when there was a loss, it's just a cost. And then I just remain impartial and just move on to the next setup. Um, but it. I think the key thing I don't do is deviate. So yeah. I make sure the same thing that I, because it's not even about the outcome. It's more about the process. As long as I executed the same process, the outcome will take care of itself later on. Um, and that's yeah, just what that's, I did. And then it's, I just, it's, it's, it's music to my ears, everything that you're saying. And I hope those watching, hope you're taking notes, right? This is a uh, wisdom from an experienced trader. And just looking for your stats now. So you you have a um, pretty good uh, recovery factor of 3.11. So, you know, it shows that you kept your drawdown low, which is excellent. You kept it at 3.16 even uh, and you hit the 10% target which is fantastic so we have the here the total net profit uh you have a win rate of 60% which is way above average would you say that's uh an accurate sort of figure for what you do on average 
your strike rate? Um, yeah, between 60 and 70%. I tried to keep it at 70, but I'm surprised. You said it's way above average. Oh, man, I, I, didn't, I didn't know that, but um, definitely between 60 and 70%, yeah. Yeah, I would say average is about 45. Yeah, it's never that low. Nah, never <laughs> that low. I feel like um, because of one thing I, c- I probably add to that is with these accounts, I risk 1%. So yeah. as we know, generally it's a four percent drawdown, five percent. So four or five trades, you know, you're out of the game. So it's very important for my strike rate to be higher for me Absolutely. to make sure that I'm, I'm consistent with that. So, and what kind of um, reward are you looking at? What kind of uh, risk reward? Uh, so two R, two and a half R sometimes, and on very rare occasions three R. Do you um, take partials there, or do you fully exit? No, fully exit. Um, so I tried partials before. Again, that's something I've tried before. Uh, I don't know. Maybe it just doesn't suit my personality or something, but I didn't really uh, get on with that type of way mm-hmm. of trading. So I just literally just fully, fully exits. But one thing I do is make sure that I move my stops accordingly. So I don't. I wouldn't like, that's the same thing as taking partials, but I move my stops as my trade moves, moves along. Yeah. So let's have a look at your, your your balance chart here. So from the initial, I would say probably 70 trades, I would say 70% of the time you were oscillating between break even. So you were just above water, below water. But, you know, I, I rarely see an equity or balance chart like this because most of the time, traders are, are they end up over leveraging they end up chasing their losses and they just end up blowing up but you managed to maintain the account you still kept the drawdown at three percent this is an example of just sticking to the plan sticking to the process at any point during this that these sort of first 70 percent or 70 trades was at any point during this process did you have any doubts? Did you have any? Did you stress out? Anything like that? Um, honestly, not really. Maybe one, once or twice, but nothing uh, substantial which will cause me to act out of character with my system. I think mm-hmm. uh, the main thing is I have strong beliefs in my system, yeah, and in my edge. And I think once you've done the work internally of having the patience and trust in, in your edge will play out, then everything everything else should should fall in line. Um, and yeah. that's just what I do. Just remain patient. Obviously, I'm human as well. 70 trades, that's about four months or so around that. But, I mean, it's, it's just, just just wait, man. Just have patience, keep executing, and it'll come in. So Yeah. So if you can go back to your first eight years, what advice would you give yourself? Ah, uh, the first eight years is, um, again, just don't give up, man. I feel like it, it wasn't it wasn't easy, and I wouldn't lie to you. And I think that's something that um, people shouldn't be misled with on social media with all these people saying trading is easy and, you know, coming on, you're going to get rich in a, in a year or whatever. Like, I think trading is a real, real... Um, Probably one of the hardest things I've probably done to date. Uh, I did a degree, I did a dissertation, and trading was harder than that. <laughs> um, yeah. and, and the only reason it is because it's you against you, it's you against your emotions, it's you against your things. So that's I think what makes it hard is it's no one else but yourself, and you have to. I think trading goes against all of the natural emotions and natural things and this is something that's covered quite a lot in trading in the zone by mark douglas so i think the real battle is unlearning what you think is is the natural thing to do emotion wise and knowing um how to process that efficiently i think that takes a lot of time to really get get under wraps so um, so i think the first eight years just keep working on yourself um keep back testing also getting a, a good system knowing what suits you um, is really important. I mean, there's a million ways to make money in the market. One person's strategy might not go with your personality trap. So I think it's important not to just follow every strategy, Tom, Dick and Harry's strategy and just 
really it's okay to take some mentorship guidance shit, but then you need to really make something your own in my opinion yeah. and um once you've done that back test it make sure it works over a period of 100 trades once it does make sure you've worked on yourself the emotional side which is a big big part and then yeah hopefully come out the other side but i just say just never give up just keep going if you really have a passion for it i think that's what that's a key thing as well if you have a passion it'll pull you through if you're doing this for that quick money or quick riches in my opinion i don't think you're going to last very long because there's yeah. going to be times where you're going to lose a lot and the only reason you're going to carry on is because you actually love it or you want to actually do this thing seriously so yeah exactly exactly and uh so what's been your experience with city traders imperium with the funding program the withdrawal process what was been your experience with that great man like i said um this is my first time passing as you guys already know i passed a year ago even with that um i got paid out instantly last year i think i even had a, a conversation with the founders which was really nice they called me at that time um even now, I got paid out quite quick. Uh, within like a week, my money is back in the card. So just positive things, man. CTR, nothing really, nothing, nothing really bad to say, man. Good, good, good. good, good. How, how much was your payout for? Uh, three and a half, three and a, seven thousand. Because three and a half each. Yeah. Um, seven thousand dollars. Yeah. Fantastic. Are you looking to um, continue to increase your portfolio? what i said past challenges and stuff yeah are you looking to reinvest and increase your portfolio get oh right 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 what um what's your plan to increase your aum good question as for now um i haven't thought about that just yet um literally uh, my thing is just keep trading well um and the portfolio will naturally increase maybe obviously i've got these two accounts with cti so within the next two to three months hopefully that will double as well so my plan right now is if you're asking am i planning to reinvest money back into more challenges or more direct funding not at the moment i might do later okay. um, but i feel like i've got enough aum right now that i'm managing across my whole portfolio that i just keep making good trades and yeah. that will actually grow so yeah it's not about the money anymore it's about the process yeah yeah exactly more so yeah, yeah. and are, are you are you into trading competitions no, not really. So that, and that's another thing. I'm not really into like, um, maybe I should start, but I, I'm not really into the community stuff. I haven't yet. I'm not against it, but I haven't really been involved in the community. I don't know much about it. I don't know about the trading challenges. I think I've got a couple of emails about trading nut or something challenges. I've seen that quite a bit, but I haven't actually partaken in any challenges yet. Um, maybe it's something I might do, but I haven't done it yet. Okay, interesting. Right, Emmanuel, well, thank you so much for your time. It's been so, so insightful it's been full of wisdom and uh yeah very grateful for the opportunity to discuss these topics with you and how you run your trading business i mean you, you're very very successful at doing it and there's many traders out there that would love to be in your position but perhaps they don't realize how how much work and how much dedication how much commitment that they have to put in and obviously you've demonstrated these values and these traits so uh yeah well done it's been an absolute honor i'm very very excited about how you progress in your career so uh, i wish you the best of on luck with all of that and i hope you continue to be disciplined and uh com continue to obviously improve thank you thanks for having me man thanks hey guys what a brilliant interview it was packed full of insights and experience from a trader that's been trading for over 10 years now and is finally running his funded business with success now if you've enjoyed this video make sure you like smash that like button and if you're interested in one of our direct funded programs click the link in the description below for more information on direct funding right guys take care and i'll see you on the next interview